Does anyone ever get any really good cleaning done in less than three hours? Well, if you do, then kudos to you, but I know that it usually takes me three or more hours to get anything done. But if today is one of those days where you plan to get tons of cleaning done, then this video was made especially for you. Now don't get discouraged because these five videos are compiled over several weeks, all broken into a three hour window to keep you company while you do your long clean. If you're new to my channel and decide to keep watching, then trust me, you will get to know me very well from dirty stained pee toilets to finding out I'm pregnant in our gender reveal, you will get to know all about me. And if you decide to subscribe and stick around, then I would love for you to leave me a comment and let me know a little bit about you as well. My name is Michelle and from the outside of my house, it may look all nice and pretty, but from the inside, it is complete chaos and total disaster. I take it one step at a time, one day at a time and get as much done as I can when I have the time. But I am a pregnant mom of two and I don't typically enjoy cleaning. I know, crazy, right? But that doesn't mean that I can just ignore it either. So over the last year and a half, I have taken these dreaded chores and turned it into a creative outlet, also giving you motivation if you struggled just like I did. So when you come to this space, you should feel welcome, you should feel normal, and most importantly, you should just take a deep breath and go, okay, I'm not the only one out there like this. But in this next three hours and in these upcoming five videos, you will get tons of cleaning motivation, laundry motivation, deep cleaning, organizing, a little bit of DIY, some life updates, and the dirty of the dirtiest, the bathrooms. These are all somewhat more recent videos from 20, the beginning of 2022 until now. If you have watched some of these videos before, then I am so, so thankful of your support and you taking the time to actually listen to me, talk to me, comment with me, and just be a part of this community. If this is your very first time here, then I would love for you to join. I want more than anything to feel like you belong here and this is a good space for you. And as we all know, the house is not going to clean itself, so let's go ahead and get started. Something, something I can never be without, yeah I'm in your command Thought I was a man of my own, but It's been two years I'm only a shadow of the good on me now A breeze in my ear Cause you know I cannot see no audio Feeling like home But should it be like this? Locked up in your dome, you know I fight for you. What do I? Every time you call my name, what do I? What do I? You're whipping me into madness. I try to Welcome to a typical weekend in our house. Laundry piled up, clothes all over the floor, and just the usual mess. Today's video is going to be another fun one because we get this messy house picked up and I also put Chris, my husband, to work. I have all of these DIY projects that I want to do. I blame um, Chip and Joanna Gaines from Fixer Upper because I just want to do like all of this DIY stuff to our house. So if you were here last year and you watched me, then you noticed that I kind of updated these um, niches in our house and we never finished painting the top of them. Like it's been a year and I'm like, hopefully no one looks up there and notices. So I have a fun project to kind of DIY those and give Give those a little bit of an upgrade so that whole project which i'll show in the second half of this video after all of the cleaning motivation was probably about 200 dollars, and it would have been cheaper if i didn't pick out um, the bougie expensive paint uh, but other than that it was fairly inexpensive and i think it turned out amazing 
If you're new here, I'm really glad to have you in this amazing growing community. And if you're wondering why I had so much laundry, well, I have two toddler girls, Sailor, who is four, Savannah, who is two and a half, and my husband and I, and I get to the laundry when I get to it. I hate that it piles up that much, but unfortunately that's just what happens sometimes. So I'm gonna hopefully take care of a lot of that today and give you some laundry and folding motivation. I'm starting off here in the kitchen before moving on to the living room and then I'll move on to the bedroom while still doing laundry in between. And then upstairs is our daughter's playroom. So I'm gonna kind of tidy that up a little bit as well as Sailor's bedroom. And then once we kind of get the whole house picked up is when we can start our DIY project. Make sure you're subscribed if you have not already because I do have a lot of fun, different stuff coming up. We, like I said, we're doing some more projects. I'm gonna be doing some decluttering, some organizing, and some more DIY projects along with all of the cleaning motivation. So if that's something that you're interested in, then I would love for you to hit that red subscribe button. I see you from across the room It's kind of crowded here But I know you see me too Everybody's singing oh Everybody's singing oh I don't know what it is about you It must be in the way you move Just say you want me to We've got nothing to lose You're looking so old So I keep talking about all of these projects that I want to do in our house. And if you follow me over on Instagram, which is Michelle O'Malley 711, then you'll notice that we like went to a tile store and I also talked about redoing our closet. And what happened was, is that, um, I had asked you guys also one time about the Ikea pack system. So I, it had been a couple of weeks and we were like finalizing this design that we want because you can go into their website and make this design that fits like the, basically the measurements of your closet and you can customize it however you want and, you know, make everything just fit in your space. And, um, Chris and I were like disagreeing about some of the stuff. And then finally we came up with a solution. We put together the perfect design and we had planned on um, you know ripping out all the carpet in our closet taking everything out customizing it with the IKEA pack system and when I went to order the whole system half of everything was out of stock it just said it's no longer in stock it's unavailable and there's no it wouldn't tell me like when it was coming back into stock. So I just felt really bummed about that. I also went to like container store and got a quote on the design and it was like almost $7,000. So I was like, I just can't. Um, the Ikea one, even though it seems expensive, it, it was around like 2000, which is still expensive, but I mean, not compared to like the, a custom closet, like 7,000. So I'm not sure what to do. I like, I'm thinking about just holding off and waiting for it to come back in stock, which I don't know when that is. Or if you guys have any ideas to have you, did you guys do like any type of home closet system or anything like that and can give me some tips that way I, cause I want to get started on it sooner rather than later. The dish soap that I just used there, that's the method soap. I like the method. I use a lot of their products, especially in the laundry room. Um, I like their multi-purpose spray as well as their dish spray. And I also use the Dawn soap. So after like reading this article, I've shared it a couple of times, but it talks about how, you know, if you're cleaning a lot, if you are using cleaning products that are toxic, then over time, it can, like over a 20 year period, it can be like the equivalent of to your lungs as smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. So 
I was reading some studies about it and to think about sometimes how much we actually clean our house and how we're always using the chemicals, whether we're wearing gloves or not, um, you know, we're still breathing in those fumes or they're just, the fumes are just hanging out for a while after we're done cleaning. So my whole purpose was to try and go 80% non-toxic. Now there's still some products I use that have chemicals. Sometimes they just clean a little bit better, but the whole concept was for me to go 80% and the method cleaners, the jaws cleaners, um, Mrs. Myers, a lot of those products are what I have been leaning more towards and kind of finding myself buying a lot more because I like the fact that they don't have a ton of chemicals in them. So I don't think I've mentioned this for a while. A couple things that make our bed really, really comfortable, whether it looks like it's comfortable or not, is that we got like over Christmas time or before Christmas, we got this lucid mattress um, pillow top pad and it was from Amazon and it was like around a hundred dollars, I think, but it, the price just depends on what size your bed is so we added that to our bed and it makes our bed so so comfortable um, another thing is that we use bamboo sheets so these are the Karalua bamboo sheets this is my second pair of sheets that I have that are Karalua and they are so comfortable these are a little bit more pricey but I mean I have tried so many different types of cotton hundred thousand thread count whatever um, and I, I always feel like I'm I'm sleeping on sandpaper so I until I found these like bamboo sheets then I have not been able to ever go back now there's other pairs like um, in sailor's bedroom I have the um, it's not the Karaloa brand but it is a bamboo type sheet and her sheets are so comfortable as well so they are amazing if you haven't tried them or if you're just like looking for new sheets then I recommend looking up the Karalua bamboo sheets. Here I'm using the Method laundry detergent but I'm also mixing it with a cap of this Glamorous wash. So the Glamorous wash has a very very strong scent but it smells so good. So sometimes when I'm washing like sheets or towels or anything like that I'll just add one cap of that to whatever laundry detergent I already have which is mostly Method. That's what I've been using the last several months and it just comes out smelling really really nice. I'm out of reasons, I'm out of rhyme But I'll only tell you that I'm out of time I'm sick of love songs, I'm tired of this And I wanna tell you straight just like it is You're watching me like you want me But you're still holding back, still holding back Honestly, you're annoying me With the way that you keep playing now moving on to all of the folding of the laundry I always fold clothes on my bed I don't know why I've seen people do it on their couches or in their laundry room or whatever our laundry room is kind of small so I always just take it over to my bed sort it out and fold it and I have that little basket there because I fold KonMari style totally game changer you should definitely try it if you don't already fold in this method um, it's a little intimidating at first whenever the KonMari method came out several years ago on Netflix I did not want anything to do with it I was like that's gonna take me years to fold clothes um, until I actually started trying to get better at organizing and things like that is when I gave it a try and I have not gone back to another type of folding method it just makes everything so much nicer obviously easier easier to see as well so so leave me a comment down below do you typically fold KonMari style like I do or do you just fold it kind of the regular way do you have drawer organizers are you more organized or less organized for your clothes um, leave me a comment down below and let me know Open my heart like
that you're fearless Steal all the gold you can get, you can get Show me your love, leave me breathless, breathless Next, we are moving on upstairs. I have all of this laundry to carry up and I am going to have the girls help me clean up a little bit. Now, this room is not that big of a disaster to me. If you have seen some of my other videos, you've seen that it is way worse. But um, as you can see, there are stickers all over the wall. I think um, one of the friends came over and, and put them all over the wall, but I'm just gonna have the girls take them down and also help me pick up around here. But I did just wanna say that I am so glad that you guys enjoyed last week's video. I have gotten so much positive feedback from that as well as it was so much fun for me to make and do something different. So it was the black light cleaning video. It definitely did not get pushed out because it was so different, but just judging by your comments, you guys really enjoyed being different, unique, and like posting something kind of way out there. So it was definitely eye-opening to see some of those really, really dirty areas that we can't see with a blind eye, but we can see when we use a black light. But this kind of leads me into my next topic of just these last couple of weeks. I don't know what has gotten to me, but I have been so unmotivated. I have literally been questioning a lot of things. I have been wondering if I should, you know, stay on this journey. I have been just in this weird, weird funk about what the next steps are for me and, you know, where I want to take, you know, all of these next steps. And it's not like me to come on here and be the one who is unmotivated because that's always my job is to motivate you. Um, but one of the things I did, I started another audiobook. As you know, I, I'm always listening to audiobooks and um, I'm reading the. The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. So one of the first habits, and maybe I'll share a lot of this throughout the books, is being proactive and taking responsibility for your life. Now, I truly believe in life that there are just some things that happen that are unfair. I think that some things are just out of our control. But what he says about being proactive is that you can't keep blaming everything on outside factors, on other people, on other things that have happened. So instead of always trying to change or blame outside factors, being proactive is changing from the inside out. He also talks about being proactive and reactive. So being proactive is working on the things that we can do something about, our health, our children, our problems, things that work. And being reactive is focusing on things we have little or no control over, such as the weather. I heard this quote by Jim Quick, um, and I will always remember it. It goes, if an egg is broken by an outside force, life ends. If it's broken by an inside force, then life begins. Great things always happen from the inside. Now, I believe that motivation comes from within, but how do you change that when you're not motivated? Well, for me, Listening to positive affirmations, listening to audiobooks, listening to stories of hope and accomplishment, keeping my small circle of influence positive and uplifting are things that really help me get out of that funk and get re-motivated and on track. Because these things are so, so helpful to me, that's why I like to share them all with all of you. So for now, I'll recap the seven habits of highly effective people from Stephen Covey. Habit number one, being proactive and focusing on things that are in our control, such as ourselves. So as I get through the book, I'd love to share more as well as my perspective on it and how it has helped me. When someone don't help you. When someone don't help you through the rain When feelings don't matter And everything's nothing but a game Game Just know that I'm with you Just know that I'm with you through it So the next day after I had cleaned up everything, our dog Piper had been 
throwing up a lot and she ended up walking over to our living room rug and throwing up all over the rug so I pulled out the Bissell little green machine I opened it up in last week's video I had it for a while and just finally opened it up last week so I pulled it out so that I could work on these two spots that are really yellow and they're actually really really hard to get out we started off using the pet solution that it came with and when I was doing all of this, Chris came home from work and decided to try and come and help me. Now his preference for this is using a shop vac and soap and water, but um, he just was like, let's go get that warm water and the soap and water and then kind of put it on the rug and start scrubbing it. So he's down there now kind of scrubbing it and with just Dawn soap and water and hot water and trying to get it up and then using the Bissell machine to suck everything up. This living room rug is very, very thin. I do have a rug pad underneath and we did check it like afterward to make sure that not like a lot of the water didn't soak underneath. But what I'm gonna have to do is probably in the next video, I'm gonna get out the um, full on shampooer and do the entire rug because it didn't get it out as much as I wanted it to. Um, it did a really, really good job, but there's still, you can still see like the tent there. So we're just gonna have to um, do as much as we can here. And then next week I'll go ahead and get out the bigger shampooer and do the entire rug. moving on to part two of the video which is the entryway makeover DIY and see what I mean by the top niches up there were not painted they were not all the way painted um, that is something that we are going to finally fix the reason why we didn't get all the way up there is because we have to have the really 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 tall ladder and the big ladder is in Chris's storage unit which is not kind of, not that close to our house so it's just kind of a pain and we honestly just took too long to go and do it. So my whole idea here was that if you haven't watched our um, bedroom DIY makeover, we actually paneled the top ceiling of it. It looks really cool. I'll link that video down below. So my idea was to get the same type of like paneling boards and do that in these niches right in our entryway. The paneling that we use is super affordable. We just bought four different panels to fit into each archway and each panel board was like $25. So total for just the paneling board, it was $100. And then I decided to use the same paint. So I used the Tricorn black paint by Sherman Williams, which was already in those archways. I decided to go ahead and keep it black because I just liked the look of it. The first thing that Chris is doing is taking measurements and trying to figure out the exact sizing so that we can cut the paneling boards exact. So he's gonna go ahead and use a saw and start um, sawing out the archways. Now the reason why we use like this one solid paneling board instead of like individual um, wood panels is because it is a lot cheaper. It's so much easier because you can just put on one whole thing at a, one whole sheet at a time and it's not individual and it's a lot lighter. We use the same type of board for the ceiling on in our bedroom and like I said we liked it because it was very light. It wasn't like super super heavy. You don't have to worry about it falling which I'm sure it doesn't really fall that often. That's not that common but it's just something that was easy. We use smaller nails and everything just looks amazing and you can hardly even tell that it's not like real wood. Once we got all of the panels to fit perfectly in each niche, then that's when I started painting. 
So again, I am using the Sherman Williams Tricorn Black in a satin finish. I used the brush to get the majority of the paint on and then I had to go back with the paint brush and actually paint in between the grooves. I had to put about two coats of paint on this before allowing it to dry and then coming back and putting one more additional coat on it. Because our master closet project got put on hold for a while since all of the parts are pretty much out of stock and I have no idea when they're coming back in stock, then our next big project is going to be our laundry room. So we went out and bought tile for our laundry room. We are going to be ripping out all of the tile on the floor, replacing it with new tile. I think I'm going to be wallpapering one of the back walls, getting a new light fixture and making over our entire laundry room as well as putting in a better organization system because as you saw before um, you know we just have clothes everywhere all over so that is also going to be an upcoming project as well as our office area closet I'm going to be ordering a closet system the one I again I wanted from Ikea is out of inventory so I found one on Wayfair that I'm going to order I'm going to organize that whole room as well as put in a functional closet I told Chris our next home is going to be a fixer upper. So we're going to practice a lot of smaller projects on this home. Do you guys have a fixer upper? How challenging was it? Do you like DIY projects? Do you like already built projects? Have someone come and do it. Leave me a comment down below and let me know. Now that we have all of the paneling boards painted, all of the paint is dry. Then Chris is going ahead and nailing it into the wall. Once he gets everything nailed into the wall, then he is going back around and caulking the edges to fill in any of those additional gaps. The very first paneling, he had already put it into the wall, nailed it in, sanded the edges, caulked it and dried in everything. And that is why I'm painting it on the wall. That was kind of the tester. He wanted to put them all on the wall and then paint them. And I wanted to paint them on in the outside and then put them in later on because it's so much easier to do the edging of the paint if they are not already on the wall. So that is why we just had one that I'm painting on the wall. Um, while I'm doing this, he's going in on the other ones and kind of um, doing the caulking, edging, sanding off where the nail holes are, and then going back with the black paint and then touching up those areas. Now we are putting in the final paneling board on this top left niche and he is going to go ahead and nail it in. Now it looks so much better from before. If you just like glance at it, you already saw that it was black and maybe couldn't tell, but I promise you it looks so, so good. So the next thing we're doing is putting the pictures back into this area. And another really cool thing that I have seen in so many of the home you know, renovation channels, fixer upper, flip or flop, all of these things are these little lights that you can put over a really nice picture frame to kind of illuminate it and make it look super fancy. So I picked up two of these from Amazon. They were like 30 something bucks each. So very inexpensive and they're not battery operated, but you actually can charge them. So they're rechargeable and all you do is like slide them off and then put plug them into the wall and recharge them but there's this little button on the side all you have to do is press it and then the light turns on and off and you can also dim the lights as well 
So these came with screws as well as like sticky things. So you just stick them onto the wall. We did stick them at first and then you actually slide the light into that. So that way you can slide it in and off and charge it when needed. But um, we had to go back and actually um, nail them into the wall. So the sticky part didn't really help. They fell off the wall. Um, so yes, I do recommend actually using the nails that it comes with and then nailing that piece into the wall. After we let everything dry, then we went ahead and pulled the tape off. Chris kind of went into the corners and adjusted that where the caulking was so that it was sa the same color as the wall color. And now I'm putting everything back kind of how it was before Christmas, decorating this area up a little bit, and I'll show you the final result. I think that it looks so much better. It adds so much detail and t texture. Uh, you know, it's not that different from the way it was before, but it just really adds that elegant feel right into the entryway. And I absolutely love the way it turned out. I love the way that the lights look with it. Again, this is kind of the before. I had already painted it. Um, again, it was unfinished paint, so it just looked a little bit sloppy. But I hope you enjoyed today's video. Make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. So how good do you really think you're cleaning your house? In today's video, we are gonna have a ton of fun. Okay, it may be a little bit gross or a lot gross, but it wouldn't be as fun if I didn't show you absolutely everything. So this is definitely a different video and I will say one of my absolute favorites. And I'll get to all of that in just a minute. But if you're new here, I wanted to introduce myself. My name is Michelle. I'm a mom of two toddler girls and I am not your typical Stepford wife, perfect house, as you can see here. And I kind of sometimes consider myself a little bit of a cleaning misfit. So I just wanted to throw that out there so that you know what you're walking into. But it's not about focusing on the things that you're not good at. It's about empowering and strengthening the things that you are good at. So my goal for you is to always leave here with more inspiration than what you started with. And cleaning just so happens to be that thing and that pathway that we all have in common. So that being said, let's see what we're working with today. So in today's video, I'm kind of starting off during the day and I am going to be cleaning up mostly all of the routine cleaning. So I'm gonna be cleaning up the kitchen, the dishes that I just finished, um, the stove. I'm gonna move on to the bedroom, do laundry that I'm really behind off behind on and then I'll move upstairs into the upstairs playroom and kind of pick up everything there now once I get what I consider like all of my routine cleaning done then that's when we're moving on to the dark side and what does that mean well basically it means that I'm finding all of the dirtiest spaces that you cannot see with a blind eye I think one of the most important things with cleaning is that we want like all of the bacteria, all the viruses, all of the germs actually picked up. And we just can't see if it's really doing its job. I mean, we can see if there's crud or, or you know, stuff on the counters and we wipe it down. Obviously, our cleaning products will do that. But I always wondered, how can we really tell if some of this stuff is really killing and getting up all of the germs? 
So in my mind, I had thought of some type of a black light, but I started going on Amazon and started Googling or, you know, started looking for um, devices that show bacteria in your house or something like that. And then everything that popped up was this black light. Now I didn't find exactly what I was looking for, like bacteria and germs. I'm not sure how difficult it is to kind of find all of that. But when I found the black light, this is what it says, that it basically helps detect food stains and pet urine stains on rugs, carpets, and clothes that are otherwise invisible to the naked eye. So it does not work well on cat urine. Well, I do have a dog and, um, you know, sometimes I wonder where exactly some of those spots might be. So I figured, you know what, this could actually be helpful. So a, a couple other things that it says that it does is that it helps authenticate um, currency and official documents like driver's license, um, things like that, or it's perfect for outside use such as finding scorpions. So if you live in a place where you have scorpions, you could find anything like that. And the one I got on Amazon was only $12.99. So I figured I would give it a try and see what happens. So about halfway through this video is when it becomes nighttime and I pull out the black light and we see where all the mess is. But for now, let's get started downstairs and actually pick up everything that we can see. You got something Something I can never be without, yeah I'm in your command Thought I was a man of my own, but It's been two years I'm only a shadow of the good on me now A breeze in my ear Cause you know I cannot see no So some of the products that I've been using consistently for the laundry are mostly the Method products. So I've been using the Method laundry detergents as well as the Method dryer sheets. And then around the house, I have been using the Jaws cleaner. So I do like the Method cleaner. I do like Mrs. Myers. Um, I have a ton of different cleaners and um, in the next couple of videos, maybe in February, I plan to do like a comparison of all of the different products I have. But for now, since I have like a ton of Jaws products, I've been consistently using that. I also have a couple handheld vacuums. Well, not a couple, I guess just two. I have the Dyson, this is the V7. So it's a lot older model and the um, battery actually went out in it and we had to order, um, meaning like when you charge it, it still wouldn't charge. So we ordered a second battery and now, you know, it works perfectly fine. And we also have the Tinco. So these are just cordless vacuums that you can switch out the attachments and um, make it a handheld vacuum. For me, they both work great for the couch, especially if you have pets, <laughs> pets that shed a lot, then it's super easy. You can just pop it out, switch off the attachments, and then vacuum up any hair or just messes that you might have. So last week I took you guys along with my cleaning routine and basically my main thing is to clean, do majority of my cleaning over the weekends. Now I do do clean a little bit here and there. I know it doesn't seem like it during the week um, because by the time we get to the weekend, it's a total disaster. Um, but this, 
week. I'm actually cleaning during the week. Um, everyone in our family got the stomach bug. And I mean, like I was down for three days. I couldn't barely even move. And the house was, was a disaster. Chris, my husband went out of town that weekend. I was helping Savannah. Um, you know, she was throwing up all night. I was throwing up all night. I know that's gross, but that's why our sheets are different because she threw up all over the bed and she threw up all over her bed. She threw up all over our bed. Um, and you know, it was just horrible. So you guys know when you're sick and when you're taking care of your sick kids while you're also sick, it's just miserable. I mean, you're trying to do everything for them and you're like, I can barely even move. So I had no energy. I could barely even stay awake, but you know, as moms, that's what we do. We just pull through and try and make the most of it. So I'm behind because of that, but, um, I'm trying to get everything done, you know, as much as I can today. So this folding method is a little bit extra for your towels, but what was funny was I did a poll over on my Instagram one day. I was trying to organize our linen closet in the bathroom and I, I usually had fold my towels in half and in threes and I asked you guys, how do you typically fold your towels? And somebody, one of my friends had sent me this TikTok, this viral TikTok folding method of this the way that I was folding my towels. And I was like, oh my gosh, that looks so cool. Of course, theirs were all like luxury, like you were in a spa and all the towels were all beautiful. You know how that works. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try it. So I think I watched that TikTok video like 10 times to try and get the folds exactly right. And um, so ever since then, I've been folding my towels that way. Is it the easiest way? No, but they actually look really, really nice when they're all set in the linen closet. If you do follow me over on my Instagram, Michelle O'Malley 711, then you'll notice um, over the weekend, this weekend, that we were working on redoing some of the niches in our like entryway. I had originally painted them black last year, and it's funny because the very top niches, you've never seen it in a video, but they were not, not all the way painted. So it been it had been almost a year, and the top ones were not completely all the way painted. So um, if, if you haven't seen one of my, our bedroom makeover, we actually did a DIY paneling on the ceiling and we painted that black and for, it was like $80 total to do that. And it turned out awesome. So my idea was to go ahead and try and panel the front arches in the entryway, paint it black because I like the, the black tone that I had going on and then add a little bit extra over in that area so next week you'll see kind of the transformation of that area it was really inexpensive i think um the paneling boards were only about all four of them together was about a hundred dollars so it is not completely done as i'm doing this voiceover it's not completely done but we are going to finish it this afternoon and then um next week i'll have that video out so make sure that you are subscribed because some of my goals over this year are to do a lot more diy 
Um, I also shared in my Instagram our horrible office area that needs to be totally decluttered. So I am working on like a closet organization system for that area. Hopefully get that out. And then our closet is also a big disaster that is another DIY project that hopefully, you know, we'll get out and kind of figure it out. And I'll share that in the next couple of months whenever we finish that. Also, some more things I have coming out this year as I'm thinking about it is um, I'm going to try and do a little bit of decorating for Valentine's, not not major decorating, but um, just kind of some floral arrangements. I went to Hobby Lobby the other day and they were not 50% off. And you know, when you go to Hobby Lobby, you know, it's almost hard to buy anything unless it's on the 50% off sale. So I have to go back. So hopefully in February, I'm going to do a little bit of more um, floral decor around the house. And then I have been getting a lot of questions on healthy meal, dinner, easy dinners that are healthy. Um, I've mentioned um, a few times before that, and you know, over the last several years that, you know, fitness and exercise is a big part of my lifestyle. I actually at one point became personal training certified, even though I didn't necessarily coach anyone. Um, I just gained so much knowledge about food and health and healthy eating and stuff like that. So because I've mentioned that a couple of times, I think um, people have reached out about, can you share some of those tips or tricks or healthy meals? So when I start getting back to doing some of those healthier dinners that are easy, then I will be sure to film and record those into some videos so that it is helpful, helpful for y'all. And I always say, if you have any questions, you want more of any specific type of content that would be really helpful for you then always share that and i will try my best to incorporate um, what i can so i use this tinco wet vac so often that sometimes i forget to share it every single time so basically what it is is it vacuums and it mops at the same time you just fill up the canister and then i went through all of the floors and then that's why you see a little bit of like dog hair and extra stuff because it vacuums and mops at the same time so the next thing I'm going to do before I take a little break until later tonight and pull out, you know, a lot of the, the new stuff is um, clean up the upstairs. So anything that is like toys or belongs upstairs, I typically pile in the upstairs on the stairs. So that becomes a mess. But at least uh, most of the downstairs is clean. Again, I'll get to the bathrooms tonight. Um, so everything on the stairs I am taking upstairs and then I'm going to clean up the disastrous playroom. Uh, uh, uh. Every night I'm going on the grid Texting back, I want you Hit you up, I'm on the other side I miss you, miss you Take you off, I came away way to strong Cannot keep it low key So in the beginning of this video, I said that I was Or at least I felt like a little bit of a cleaning misfit And I wanted to go into detail a little bit about that and then also answer um, one of the most common questions I've been getting more recently so I am currently have a full-time job I am working from home since COVID we go back into the office sometimes but for the majority of the time we are working from home and the number one question I get is what do you do and why you know you don't talk about it a lot you don't talk about your job um, so this video I will tell you everything like my whole resume and everything I don't talk about it a lot because one I it's a little bit hard to explain and two because I think the majority of my audience here is more of like homemaking stay-at-home mom so I think my corporate job doesn't relate a lot um, it might relate so I don't mind sharing it uh, I'll start from the beginning I live in Houston Texas which is a huge oil and gas hub and that is the industry that I currently work in um, I always wanted to work in the oil and gas industry it pays significantly higher than um, some of the other common jobs and it's just you know there's there's so many well, you know, at the time there were so many oil and gas jobs available that I wanted to be the woman that works in the man's industry that makes a lot of money. Like that was kind of my whole dream behind it. So I actually started off as a temp job making $12 an hour, but I was working for a very small oil and gas company as a buyer because I was working as a buyer. I went to school um, at night to get to finish up my college degree and I got a 
degree in supply chain management and management business. So that was in 2010. And then from there, I got um, the opportunity to work at a larger company, a larger oil and gas company, working in a plant level and um, doing like manufacturing stuff. So I worked in the office and um, technically was called a planner. So fast forward a few more years and we were implementing a lot of big system process changes and I ended up joining the team to implement and roll out all of these new changes. Um, within that position that I was in for, I don't remember, four or five years, I had the opportunity to travel all over the world from Singapore to Romania to France to Italy to Aberdeen to Leeds to Mexico just everywhere I got the opportunity to meet amazing people experience so many awesome cultures and also lead and train and implement all of these new systems with a awesome team of people so now I still work on process implementation in like IT, but more so like business processes. When the pandemic hit in 2020, so did the oil industry crisis. And I mean, people were losing jobs left to right. I was furloughed. I pulled Savannah out of her school. I pretty much thought I was going to lose my job. And that's when I tried to make the best of the situation and started a YouTube channel. It's been absolutely amazing to build this community here, but I sometimes I feel like I'm on wife swap where I'm like going into this homemaking role that is not my expertise at all. I am like business, leadership, um, corporate mom, like that is more of my realm than stay at home mom. So kind of coming into this role, not that I don't know how to clean or I don't know how to like cook great, but it's just not a natural element to me. So a lot of times I get judged, like you need to do your job as a wife and a mom and clean up your mess. I'm like, I just laugh because I'm like, you know, everybody has different backgrounds. Why do women have to shame and judge? Like, if it doesn't work and and the thing about like loving and experiencing different cultures is that it's so different everywhere around the world and instead of trying to make yourself feel better by shaming someone why don't you embrace and enjoy that they're coming from a different path or they're coming from a different way of life and they just might have something really incredible to offer so i like this community is awesome because you guys give me so many tips and tricks and things like that and maybe i can give you a different perspective so, but that's why i'm really excited to offer you my youtube coaching program i've worked really really hard on it for anyone who's struggling with the idea of starting their youtube channel i am confident that i can help you reach your goals it is one-on-one -on -one coaching and i do encourage you to check out my free training that i have linked in the description down below and I'm putting myself in situations Standing on my own They say that you love us. Okay, now the really fun stuff. It just so happened to be a thunderstorm while I was going to start cleaning up and doing some nighttime cleaning. I did not clean up the bathrooms before I pulled out this black light. So I just want to show you what it looks like in the light. I mean, could I have cleaned it a little bit? Yes, but as you can see, it doesn't look bad. Like there's nothing on the floor that makes it seem like these floors or this needs to be scrubbed so much, as much as they actually really need it. Okay, so this is so gross and so exciting at the same time. Here is my $12.99 Prime Day black light that I got off of Amazon and I am going to test it out and see what we come up with. So the first thing I'm gonna do is shut the door, make sure that it is completely dark and turn the light off and see all of the horrible things that I find. All right, so considering that this is a bathroom and this black light detects urine and also other types of stains, I think we can kind of guess what the majority of this stuff is. So when I say that I share real life, I mean the good, the bad, the ugly, you know, I think we're at the ugly right now, but hey, none of this stuff was detectable through the blind eye. And it's amazing what is going on right now and what this black light is sharing. Now, is that pee all over the wall? I don't know. I don't know how it could get there. Um, I mean, on the floors and behind the toilet, that's explainable. I have a four-year-old and a two and a half year old who is potty trained, but you know, you never know, right? But it is what it is. And then best thing we can do is get it cleaned up. Putting myself in situations, standing on my own. 
But another thing I got from Amazon was this silicone toilet scrubber. Um, I had never seen it in silicone. I think it was like $8 or something. It had mixed reviews, so I am going to try it out. I'm going to clean the inside of the toilet first, then I'm going to turn the lights back off. I didn't know how great the black light would look in the camera. Um, so I kind of do an in-between where I'm turning the lights on and then also um, turning them off. The silicone scrubber did decent. Um, I think that the brush scrubber might scrub it a little bit easier, but I like the silicone because then the brush bristles like don't sit and soak in the wet and like stay dirty, if that makes any sense. So I definitely like the silicone one. I have one in the master bathroom as well. I think here I'm just using either the disinfectant spray or the bathroom spray from Jaws. But as you can see, I mean, it's gotten it all up and it feels good to actually visually see that it's cleaned up. My next task is to work on the floor. So the very, very back behind the toilet as well as the bottom side of the toilet. So obviously this is what we see with the black light. So I'm turning the lights on for just a second so I can show you what it looks like in the light. So you cannot really see like that. You don't see that in the, in the plain light. You see that with the black light only. So here I'm trying to hold the camera, scrub it up as best as I can and show you guys um, what all is getting picked up and what is kind of staying in the black light. So for the most part, I got everything picked up. There's a couple round spots in that back corner, but they are just not coming up. So I'm going to just have to leave it for now. Um, you can't see it in the visible light, but now I got to work on the front of this toilet. And y'all, like, I can't believe I'm even showing this, but I don't even know what to do but laugh. I mean, the, the only thing I can say that is so positive about this is that you see the mess that you can't see and that it is getting all cleaned up. Now this side of the cabinet, I actually scrubbed it for a while and with the black light, it did not come up. There's nothing visible in the light. Um, I think that these just might be regular stains. I just don't know because I even turned the light on. I scrubbed it as best as I could and then um, it didn't come up. See on the countertop, that didn't come up either. So I'm not sure exactly what that is. I don't know if it's part of the granite. Um, it just didn't come up. So the next thing I'm going to do is turn the light on and then just kind of give this bathroom a good deep clean wipe down. Now let's do one more walkthrough and see what it looks like after I've cleaned it. So glad I got that over with. Now the next area that I have to clean is the master or primary bathroom. So basically what I'm going to do is take everything off the countertops, clean up the countertops, and then I'm going to head over 
into the um, toilet area and I'm gonna then again pull out the black light and see what I'm working with. So here with just a bare visual eye, um, obviously it doesn't look too terrible. It's not like you can see yellow pee or anything like that all over the toilet. I mean, it's not, I mean, I could wipe it down obviously, but um, I wanna wait and show you guys the difference, what it looks like with the black light on. So I did actually turn off all of the lights here and do the black light throughout the whole bathroom, even like the bathtub and the shower and there was just nothing. So um, again, it just detects, like it says it detects like urine and stains. I don't know what like specific food stains. So I don't, I didn't see any in this area. The only area that we will see is actually in the toilet area. So. So that's why we'll just do a basic clean here, wiping down the mirrors, um, countertops and everything like that before we go on and, and turn the black light back on. So I know this video is very chatty, but I have a quick second here. I wanted to talk about focusing on your strengths and not totally focusing on your weaknesses. You know, sometimes we're so focused on our weaknesses, whether you're in a corporate job where they're like, here's your performance review. These are all the things you need to work on or you're in an interview and they're like, what are your weaknesses that you need to work on? In my opinion, I heard the saying that you don't tell a fish that they need to learn how to walk because that's their weakness. If you have a strength or a power, you need to be focusing full force on what that is opposed to worrying so much about what your weakness is. Your weaknesses, in my opinion, you can outsource. If you're not great at cleaning, hire a maid. If you're not great at editing, hire an editor. You know, focus on what you are truly, truly good at and excel in that. When I created my YouTube channel going, I'm not great at cleaning, but I'm great at leading. So maybe I can focus on that. So I want you to do the same thing. What is your strength? Don't say you don't have any and take that to the next level. You can always improve on a weakness, but you can absolutely excel when you focus on a strength. Now, you know I had to throw in my TED talk there, so I turned the light off, pulled out my black light, and this is what we're working with here. So not as bad as the other bathroom, but we still have some work to do in here. I told myself that maybe he ain't worth it. Too bad I hate advice. Cause out of sight and out of mind is perfect. So here again is the difference in what you see in the light opposed to what you see in the dark.
so I got a second silicone scrubber toilet brush, bowl brush, whatever it's called, um, and that's what I'm using in here as well. I, I just wanna be around you. So what do y'all think about this black light thing so far? You think that it's so interesting? You want to know? You want to see? Or are you like, nope, I'm better off just not knowing and just cleaning everything that I can see? Leave me a comment down below and let me know. Because now I have another tool that is hopefully going to help me, now that I'm done with the bathrooms, um, help me with the carpeted areas. This is the Little Green Bissell Machine. If you have this already, leave me a comment down below. Let me know how you like it. So I bought this several weeks ago, like right after Christmas, and I'm just now getting around to pulling it out. Now, I do have the um, Bissell vacuum, and um, if you have been following me for a long time, I we have, there's a handheld attachment, and I have not used it in several months because I said that I think I broke that attachment and I don't know how to fix it so instead of like figuring all that out I just ended up buying this I want to see how it works so okay here we go I turned off the light in our this is a fairly new rug and the first thing that I'm going to do is try and pick up the stains that I cannot see so in the blind eye again you cannot see any of this so I was kind of shocked when I um, turned off the light and found all of those stains so as you can see there with the blind eye you don't see that big old spot right so i put the flashlight down to show me exactly where the spot was and what i did was i got this um this new little green machine to see exactly where it is and where i need to clean up so now i'm trying to figure out is this thing getting the spot out now is this pee is this um food stain is this some other type of stain i have no idea um the only other thing i can think of is that i also use the um it's called folex stain remover and sometimes i will squirt that on this rug to see if it removes the stain so i'm wondering did, did it like um, bleach out this spot or something where you can't see it underneath i don't know but i'm using this and it's not working so i'm just not going to worry about it um, if it was pee it would get it up um, it just must be something else. So now I'm going to work on the stains that are visible and that I can't see. Um, this is makeup. So the girls got the makeup and kind of rubbed it on the carpet. One thing I have to be very careful about and another reason why I got this is because my handheld Bissell, um, if I were to do this whole rug, this rug is very sensitive and even kind of using this it's pulling up some of the fibers so i didn't want to use the big bissell pet pro shampoo or vacuum that i have on this rug because i don't want it to completely ruin the rug and if the attachment on that shampoo worked i would have tried that but here we are this thing works pretty good so now we're upstairs this carpet is very dark you cannot see anything and i am pulling out the black light here so i see a big spot right there and i already am assuming that this is dog pee and the reason why is we our dog is 11 years old or no she's 12 years old she's a black lab and sometimes um if we go out of town then um we have somebody come and watch her so i smelt it right there it was pee i would have never guessed that so i am using this is actually a pet pro little green machine that is like kind of made for um, pet stains and things like that so it kind of works out that I'm using this black light which is to detect pet urine and whatever uh, other stuff and um, this pet picker upper to actually clean up pet mess so they both kind of work together and go hand in hand so here I decided just to turn the light off and kind of spot clean so I know exactly where the stain is and making sure I'm getting it up and Y'all, it actually did. When I put the black light over it, it is all the way up. Now, all of those little white things, you know what those are? Those are from the the stuff in our Christmas tree and in our attic. So that is more so like I need my um, vacuum cleaner and clean it a little bit better. But I found another hidden spot. 
It is right near the rug and I figured it would just be easier to turn the lights on and try and clean this whole area a little bit better. I did get down on my hands and knees and yes, it smells like pee. So I am 100% sure that that is dog pee that I am going to get this up with this um, like little green machine handheld thing. Since there was still some spots that I missed with the light on, then I decided to turn the lights off and use the flashlight, black light to see the exact spots that I'm missing. That way I can be sure that I get it all up. Cause it's the way it goes And I will never know Why you let me go Look to the left, look to the right Nothing can stop me in the night Like I'm leaving all the bad stuff And trying to remain so strong I know it's good if I'm alone So I'm super pleased with everything How it got everything up I think these two tools go together Like peanut butter and jelly And now I'm going to move on to our bar stools. This is going to be the last thing that I'm cleaning. I'm not using the black light. I just want the visible stains out of this chair. These are all food stains and the best thing I can do is to use this to kind of do a deep clean on these. So this is my first time using the little green machine. I think so far it's doing an awesome job. Now once I'm done with this there is still a little bit of stains but for the most part it did a fairly decent job. I've had trouble getting stains out of these chairs just with anything that I use, but they are over six years old, so I'm not too, too concerned. I ordered the this green machine off of Amazon. It was $133, but then um, once I saw it, at Target, I kind of wish I would have bought it at Target only because if you have a Target red card, you get 5% off. So I could have gotten 5% off, but, but overall, just something to think about if you're interested in getting it and you do have a Target red card, you get that extra 5% off. But if you do have the Bissell shampooer, carpet shampooer, I mean, the handheld attachment is the same solution. So, you know, um, I think it works similar. This one might be a little bit easier, but again, if I didn't somehow break my handheld attachment, then um, I probably wouldn't have bought this because I have no more storage for all these cleaning products, but it is fun to try all of them out and just see how they all work. So here's the dirty water from the carpet and chairs. Um, I'm going ahead and ending the video here. I hope that you guys had so much fun with me, even if it was super gross, disgusting, and dirty. At least we got it all picked up. But if you're not subscribed, make sure you're subscribed. I have tons of more fun stuff coming, and I would love for you to join this community. Let me feel your love again Cause I've been running round in circles Screaming out your name Take me to a different place Just the two of us and we can stay up all night Kissing under street lights Doing what we want to Doing what we need to do Staying up all night Everything is alright kitchen deep clean, the living room clean, 
the master bedroom, the playroom, three bathrooms, three days later, I finally have it all cleaned. Well, you know, for like five minutes or so, and then I'm right back at it. So if you need a little boost to get some of your house clean, then you're in the right spot because you guys can clean along with me over this three day period. I am basically cleaning the entire house as well as throwing in a little bit of spring decor, kind of a mini prep for that and a healthy low carb recipe. So this video pretty much has it all and I'm really glad that you're here to join me. If this is your first time here, my name is Michelle. I have two daughters and a husband, and I also have some super, super exciting news to share. But we'll get to that in just a minute. If you enjoy all types of cleaning motivation, I'm really starting a lot of DIY projects coming up. I do a little bit of home decor. So all the things for your home, if you enjoy any of that type of content, then I really, really hope that you would join this amazing community and subscribe. You can also go ahead and follow me on Instagram, which is Michelle O'Malley 711, where I also like to share some fun stuff. So I am starting off in the kitchen today and am going to do a lot of deep cleaning in the kitchen, but I also wanted to mention that this video is sponsored by Robo Rock. I am trying out their new Dyad wet vacuum, which wet vacuums are one of my favorites, so I'm excited to share that with you. But let's go ahead and get started on these dishes. If you are cleaning along with me, then leave me a comment down below and let me know where you're starting off. And Go run away, get it out of your system Come back when you're older Go find a place where you can't be the victim And come back when you're older Go catch the storm within your broken bones And be wild, 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 wild. The two dish soaps that I've been using most often to um, whenever I'm hand washing some of the dishes because I typically like to hand wash the bigger dishes and not necessarily put them in the dishwasher um, are the Dawn Power Wash, not the fresh scent. I like the apple scent better and also the Method dish soap. Um, so the containers that I'm washing right there. So I, whenever I organized my refrigerator, I bought a lot of the containers from Amazon. So those are actually for fruit so that whenever you go to the grocery store and you wash all of your fruit, then you can just stick them in those containers and then put them in the refrigerator and it's supposed to like help keep them fresher or maybe just look more or organized. Um, I had actually put those in the dishwasher and it distorted the tops of them so I actually couldn't fit the lids on anymore. So everything, all the containers that I have, I hand wash them now. I never put them in the dishwasher. I don't know about you guys, if you guys have like a different brand that doesn't like distort the, the tops of them so that the top can fit on nice and neat, then let me know. But I know that the ones that I have from Amazon are that way. So we also have sink racks in our sink and those are a lifesaver if you're thinking about getting them or are kind of on the fence about getting them, especially with stainless steel and I know other types of sinks. Um, if you place dishes like directly in the sink, it will scratch the whole bottom, especially the one, the sink that we have. I think when we first bought this house, like I had only put dishes in the sink a few times and I already noticed that it would stain. The water would just sit and stain the bottom of the sink as well as scratch the bottom of the sink. So the sink racks are a lifesaver. Um, but what happens is in the corners of our sink, it gets so gross and disgusting. And I don't know if food or scum or whatever gets stuck in there. So I have to, you know, get into those corners of the sink really, really good and actually quite often because of how dirty it gets. So the good thing about having round edged sinks is that you don't have to deal with all of the scum and everything um, getting into the corners of the sink. Right now 
I'm standing in a corner I see you from across the room It's kind of crowded here But I know you see me too Everybody's singing oh Everybody's singing oh I don't know what it is about you It must be in the way you move Just say you want me to We've got nothing to lose You're looking so old so one of the most positive types of feedback I receive on my channel through my comments are that you enjoy that I share so much real life disastrous mess. Now I do admit that sometimes, especially more in the beginning, it was really hard to show like how dirty my house can get, how fast it can get dirty, how disgusting that it would get. And I don't always prioritize cleaning as my number one thing. So I feel like my house does get a little bit dirtier than most just because there's there are areas that I may leave for like a week, like the upstairs playroom. I typically only pick up about once a week. I encourage the girls to do it, but you know, sometimes they don't get it as organized as I want. So sometimes these areas, especially like deep cleaning areas get more disastrous, um, a lot more often than I would like. So, yep, it was definitely harder to share a lot of these at first thinking that, you know, people would think I was disgusting or like, you know, why don't I prioritize this a lot more often? But you know what? I just started sharing it and the amount of feedback and, you know, relatability that I get really is awesome because I know that I'm not alone, that sometimes, you know, your house just will get dirty and sometimes this, you know, the stove or like the kitchen just, you know, you fall behind on some of these tasks, but, you know, hopefully these videos are an encouragement to help you know that, you know, you're not alone in this and that it's completely normal, at least for me, to just take it one day at a time, you know, know that I'm doing the absolute best that I can and just share the journey along with you. And hopefully you guys find that helpful. When I look at you smile, I don't know how, but it feels like I'm drunk on you. It feels like I'm drunk on you. It feels like I'm drunk on you. You'll notice that this is a second coffee pot. So I just cleaned up the Nespresso, which is the coffee maker that I use every single morning. And Chris is my husband and he like does not like the Nespresso. So he sticks to the old fashioned Keurig. And we always have to buy two separate K cups or whatever coffee cups we have to get. Um, we have our two separate coffee machines and we just prefer it that way. It works best for us. So every time I clean both, I always ask you guys to let me know in the comments below which team are you on are you team Nespresso or are you team Keurig I'm out of patience I'm out of feels but I guess I'm waiting around for something real I'm going crazy like what's the deal because I want you to show me what you feel So we've been in this house for, well, this summer will be seven years. And one of my like most prized possession is getting the white cabinets whenever they were super 
trending and you know I love the white it just brightens up the kitchen and now the trends are moving towards like either two-toned or white with the natural wood or like a different color island which I absolutely am loving that trend as well but um, one thing I noticed with the white cabinets is you definitely have to clean them a lot more often because if anything drips on them then it's easy to see like right there so from far away you can't tell but from close up you can definitely tell so i don't clean the cabinets as much as i should but i definitely try to get to it when i can get, you can get. show me a love leave me breathless breathless Okay, so I promised y'all a really big announcement. And I know whenever I see anything that says big announcement, then I think of three things. And maybe you guys thought of this too. One is that you're moving because, you know, you do a lot of cleaning, you do a lot of home stuff, so you're, so you're moving houses. Um, the second thing I instantly think of is that you bought a property that you are going to be renovating or it's like a second property. Um or something along those lines. And the third thing that I think of when I hear big announcement is that you're expecting another baby. So I will say that it is one of those things and I'll let you guys kind of guess first before I officially tell you. So for the granite, I'm using the seventh generation spray. Um, I typically use the Jaws spray, but I broke the handle on the top so I can't squirt it. So I'm using the seventh generation. Okay, so one of the things that I wanted to start doing is um, incorporating more of the spring decor, even though this isn't like my official spring decorating, but I couldn't take it anymore. So I went to Hobby Lobby and got um, some different floral arrangements when everything was 50% off. And then the vase I got from Home Goods. So the first thing that I'm doing here to make like my own floral arrangement is I am adding some of the greenery at the bottom. And because these are really long stems, I just bent them. So I, order, I bought four of the long greenery stems and that's what I'm kind of starting off with as the base. Um, the next thing that I got were a group of these roses and those I actually got from Home Goods. I think it was like um, under $10 for three of the really long big stems. And then the next thing I got were some like smaller stems. I'm not really sure what flowers they are, but I picked up a couple of them from Hobby Lobby and I'm kind of filling those in. And then I got one big arrangement also from Hobby Lobby and those are more of like the white roses. So I kind of stuck those in at the end and then I just spread everything out and I think that it made a really beautiful floral arrangement for a um, pretty decent price. For my spring clean and decorate video, which I will have out in just a couple of weeks, probably sometime in the beginning of March, I'll be making some more kind of DIY flower arrangements so that you guys have some ideas where you can like put up some arrangements around your house. But next I'm moving on to the living room and I had originally planned to do a deep clean in the living room as well, but um, everywhere else in the house was such a mess that I figured that I would just wait and do it the following week so next week's video I'll have more of a living room deep clean and here I'm just going to kind of pick up and then vacuum up the couch a little bit that way I can focus on a lot of the laundry and some other areas of the house
The vacuum that I'm using here is the Dyson. It's one of the older models, the V7, and um, we've actually had to replace the battery on it, like actually order a new battery um, because it stops charging, but we just feel like they are the most powerful. And I say we because my husband likes to sometimes vacuum as well. So we have that one and we also have the Tinco, which we like both of them. The Tinco is a little bit more affordable, um, but actually this older model is pretty affordable as well. So we just switch out the attachment. And as you can see, we have a black lab. She, her name is Piper and she is 13 years old. She's almost 14. And you know, she likes to rub up against the couch. And whenever you have light couches, I mean, you know, you just see the dog hair. So that's why I typically vacuum the couch as much as possible. She also likes to lay up on this side as well. So the pet pro vacuum we feel like is really powerful in vacuuming up all the dog hair, as you can see, which is all around the couch. Isn't this a good life? Sitting on the front porch, sipping on the rocks, citrus in our beverages, citrus in our beverages. And then to vacuum up the rug, it's the same vacuum. I just switched out the attachment on it. You know it is all lies. On and on and on it goes, round and round the rodeo. Breathing out air for a minute, taking my time to begin with. On and on and on it goes. Next, in this little area over here, I have two vases, and those are kind of like wintry um, sticks in them, but I brought out some of the other vases that I've had previously, also these stems I had from Hobby Lobby. Those uh, vases are from Home Goods, so I'm gonna kind of put them right there for now. I'm gonna actually switch out this whole area and kind of redesign it. I don't know when yet. I have an idea of the things I want. I'm just waiting for them to go on sale first and then um, kind of switch out that whole uh, section. But I have waited this long to share the exciting news with you guys. So as I'm cleaning up this area, I'll go ahead and share it. Um, so we are, if you chose option number three, then you are correct. We are expecting baby number three. So at the time of recording this, we do not know the gender yet, but we are actually finding out the gender this weekend. So next week, I will actually be cleaning, prepping, getting prepared for the gender reveal party, which we're just having some close friends and family come over to our house and we're going to pop the cannons to see what it is. So if you're new here, I have two girls already. So. We do not know if it's going to be a boy or a girl. We're super excited. Either way, it kind of doesn't matter to us. Um, a boy would be great, but a girl, we kind of already have that routine going on and we have all the stuff, all the things. Um, but one thing is, is that I am terrified to have three kids. So if you are a mom of three that are somewhat close in age, then give me some tips. Give me some advice. What are some of the hard things that you struggled with or you know, give me some of the easy things or exciting things that come with having three. So after this, we are pretty much done. I do not want any more kids. I think that we are so blessed for, um, you know, the two that we have and the one that we have on the way. So um, we are just super excited. But I'll share more details a little bit later on in this video. Right now, I am getting some of the laundry picked up, switched, um, trying to keep up with laundry is so much work, but um, as I get that going, next thing I'm gonna do is work on the floors. Next, I'm excited to share the Robo Rock Dyad Wet Vacuum. And if you're not familiar with what a wet vacuum is, it actually vacuums and mops the floors all at the same time. And what's really unique about this vacuum is that it is by far the only one in the market that has two roller cleaners. They spin at opposite directions, making it easy to pick up dirt and spills in between. So the multiple roller design with the Dyad Power Motors covers one area twice. 
Having a wet vacuum allows you to save so much time, especially if you have large floor areas like I do. Our whole downstairs is pretty much hardwood floors. So having this helps you handle wet and dry areas at the same time. So it's basically vacuuming up and sucking up all of the dirt and dust as well as mopping at the same time all you have to do is fill up that canister with some water and then begin mopping the dyad leaves dirt no place to hide because it has an edge-to-edge -edge rare roller bringing cleaning right into the corners of the walls so for me all of that dirt and hidden dog hair it's easy to clean it up right in those corners and here you can see those dual roller blades in action. Having the dual rollers, I have noticed, make this dyad extremely powerful. Also having that flexible angle head helps whip around, making light work of getting around furniture or like getting around the cabinet space like I have to, really easy. Right there, I accidentally knocked the cup over on the table and spilt one of the girl's milk. So this makes it super easy for spot cleaning, either smaller or big messes, whether or not they're wet or dry. Having this powerful wet vacuum really does save you so much time because you're not having to get out a vacuum, vacuum up all your floors, and then turn around and pull out a mop and having it so dirty. This is so easy because just with a click of a button, it has a self-cleaning mode and all you have to do is empty out the dirty canister and the filter. So as you can see, our floors were pretty bad. So I just emptied out the dirty canister and you can see all of the dog hair and all of the dry mess that it picked up along with all of the water. So this is definitely a one of a kind wet vacuum and I do have a link down below if you want to check out the Robo Rock Dyad. Be sure to use the link down in the description box to get one of your own. For the laundry, I typically use the Method laundry detergent as well as those color catcher sheets. What those do is that if you tend to mix your whites and your dark clothes together, then it just you just put one of those sheets in there. They kind of look like dryer sheets and they help with the color so that the color doesn't bleed on to other clothes. Um, it will help bleed onto that sheet instead. I know I typically say this in every video, but we always, or I always fold the clothes on our bed. And I have that little basket there because I fold the girls' clothes KonMari style, and then I will separate them. Um, one side is for Sailor, my four-year-old, and then the other side is for Savannah, my two and a half-year-old. And then everything that needs to be hung up, I just kind of place on the top. And then I'll bring it upstairs and sort it out there. Once it's already done and folded, it's just so much easier. And um, I typically segregate all of their like pajamas into one pile, all of their dresses into one pile, and then all of their like shorts and shirts into one pile. And then that's how I go through all of the laundry and then begin folding. As a family of four, I feel like we go through so much laundry. Like sometimes we'll wear one to two piece of clothing a day. So everything is just piles up and I feel like I'm never caught up on laundry. Do you guys typically like do a load every single day and you're like always caught up or do you feel like you are kind of like me and always behind? So now I am moving on to the bathrooms. I have three bathrooms to clean. This is the guest bathroom downstairs, the master bedroom, 
is downstairs as well. And then, no, the master bathroom is downstairs as well. And then upstairs, I never clean that bathroom because nobody really goes in there. So um, that little scrubber I got from Amazon a couple weeks ago, and it's actually like a silicone rubber scrubber opposed to like the brush one. So I really like it. It was pretty affordable on Amazon, and I feel like it cleans very well. Someone else commented that you have the same um, toilet bowl cleaner brush and you also like it. Every night I'm going on the grid texting back. I want you hit you up. I'm on the other side. I miss you, miss you. Take you off. I came your way to strong. Cannot keep it low key. Got me drugged, your pheromones hit the roof Auto, your taste It's really a bad reception out there Where are you heading? Why ain't gravity pulling you in closer to me? I've lost you But I need you And you're off my radar now this is our upstairs bathroom that I said that no one hardly ever uses. You can tell that the lighting is so different. We hadn't switched the bulbs to like the bright white light. So that's why everything looks yellowish. Every time I come up here, I just cringe because I can't believe I forget to clean the toilet in this. So when the water just sits there, it just puts these like rings around the toilet. I mean, you're probably familiar with that, but it but for some reason in our house, they always turn like this pink color. So luckily it's super easy to scrub up, but I feel like it happens so fast. Like I could leave, not clean the toilet for like maybe a week or even less. And then it already has the ring around it. So when I wait like a month or something or, or even longer before I get up to this toilet and think about cleaning it, then the ring around just gets really, really bad. So that's why it looked so disgusting. <laughs> I need you, but you're off my radar now I'm like an outcast from pillar to post There's no denial, I'm chasing ghosts I'm like an outcast from pillar to post Hitting you up, but I'm stuck on hold It's really a bad reception out there Where are you heading? Why ain't gravity pulling you in closer to me? Yeah, I love you The last time that I did a deep clean on our bathroom, which was like two or three weeks ago, I used the black light. And if you hadn't seen that video, I encourage you to check it out. It's super motivating, but basically um, I ordered this black light online and well, of course there's stickers all over the counter too, but I ordered this black light on Amazon because I was trying to figure out what I could do to detect like if there was bacteria or dirt or anything on you know the surfaces that we can't see and if some of these cleaners actually do a really good job so i found this black light on on amazon and it basically said that it helps detect like pet urine scorpions um i don't know all kinds of stuff that you can't see with the naked eye so basically what i did was i went to all of the bathrooms and shut the lights off and then use the black light to detect how good of a job I was actually cleaning my bathroom and it was horrible. I did a horrible job. So I also used it on the rugs upstairs or on the carpet upstairs to detect um, where our dog might have had an accident and I helped, you know, clean up some of those spots. So um, if you hadn't checked out that video, I'll link it down below. It's actually really good. And the responses that I've gotten from y'all also doing the same thing is pretty cool. So don't forget to check that one out. 
Next, I'm moving on to the upstairs, which surprisingly is not terrible. I'm just going to organize a few spots here and there. Can we be strangers against our friends like a morning? So I mentioned in my last video that I'm currently reading Stephen Covey's The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I talked all about habit one in the last video and now habit two I've gotten to, which is begin with the end in mind. So habit one kind of briefly talks about you being the creator of your own destiny while habit two, begin with the end of mind talks about your first creation it talks about how people tend to be money possession career or pleasure centered where it's actually better to be principle centered and creating principles that define you whenever you feel off track and caught up in the your day-to-day -day busy life he talks about creating a mission statement that focuses on three things, which are character, who do you want to be, contribution, what do you want to do, and achievements, what are those core values and principles that govern your character. Visualize who you want to be and what you want to do, and repeatedly tell yourself positive affirmations of how you can and will get there. We're constantly tired, stressed, overworked, exhausted, but don't let those things set you off track for what you really want to accomplish and do. As I continue reading the book, I'll definitely share some more insight and helpful tips from it. I definitely have been needing all of the motivation, especially the last several weeks. I have just been so exhausted, tired, sick, trying to get through every single day, trying to keep up, not having the same energy that I did several months ago. So I completely understand those of you that might also be struggling. But next week, I'm super excited to be doing the gender reveal and sharing so much more details. I'll be deep cleaning before then. And then I'll show you some insight of um, the crawfish boil and also the reveal. So make sure you are subscribed with that. So the last, very last thing I wanted to show you is some healthy recipes. I tend to like lower carb healthy recipes and these are some Italian stuffed peppers with easy ingredients. All I'm using are some mini bell peppers, some ground turkey, some spices, an onion, and a can of tomato sauce. So the first thing you do is put some olive oil on the pan, cut up a chopped onion i think we just use about a half of an onion here and then added the ground turkey to the pan mixed it with the onion and then waited five to seven minutes for all of that to cook once everything was cooked then we went ahead and drained the extra juice i have that little green thing that is super handy it helps drain the juice without having to use a strainer and having to wash and clean all of that out but the next thing that i do is add about a half of a cup of cream cheese and mix that with the meat so i advise adding some extra spices to it the ones that we made here turned out a little bit bland i had to add some additional spices so here while we're mixing all of the cream cheese together I added some basil and oregano which are you know some Italian spices to it but I would recommend adding probably some more salt and pepper or even more so the next thing I do is I wash all the vegetables I just use some um, of the fit vegetable washer and then once those are all clean then I will get all of the mini peppers out and then cut the stems off and then once you're done cutting the stems off you can just get a spoon and kind of de-seed it once you've done all of that, then you get the mixture and just start stuffing all of the peppers. Once you have stuffed all of the peppers, what I did here was I actually added the peppers directly to the pan, but what I should have probably done was add the sauce first and then put the peppers in the sauce. That's how I've cooked it before. I think I just forgot this time and added all the peppers and then added the can of tomato sauce on top. So you can do it either way, but anyways, it turned out amazing and Please subscribe. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next week. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Three, two,
were y'all as surprised as I was? So we did have a gender reveal party to find out the gender of our third baby. So if you did not catch last week's video, I announced that I am 14, almost 15 weeks pregnant with our third child. We have two daughters, Sailor who's four and Savannah who is two. And now this is baby number three. But before I could host any type of gender re reveal party, I had to get this whole house cleaned up and deep cleaned. We first focus on the kitchen, then the bedroom. I have tons of laundry. I mean, tons of laundry to fold. And then I go ahead and deep clean the living room, including the couch, all the couch cushions I had to wash, and also shampoo the rug in the living room and in our master bedroom. Then we move outside where we power wash the rug that's out there, as well as the concrete. So tons of motivation in this video for you. If you're new to my channel, then welcome. I already told you a little bit about myself, but my name is Michelle, and I really hope that you get inspiration more than anything in all aspects of your life. The majority of the time, people tell me that they enjoy my content because it is super real life. It's relatable. My house is a disaster so much of the time. And I've learned mainly that perfection is not the end all be all and just go with the flow and have fun with it. But let's go ahead and get started and get this house prepped for the party. For the last several months, I have been using the Method Laundry Detergent. It is one of my favorites. It's non-toxic and I like the scent. Sometimes I do add this glamorous wash. It's a little bit more expensive. So what I do is I just mix like one capful into the washing machine. Like if I'm washing towels or sheets or anything like that. And it just gives it like this really nice smell. Just say you want me to. We got nothing to lose. You're looking so old. If you have been with me for a while following my YouTube journey and even following me on Instagram for the last year or so, then you know that we are not typically like homebody people. We are always on the go. We are always out and about or we're always like hosting friends and family over. So I have thrown so many different types of parties, birthday parties, baby showers, um, gender reveal parties, um, all types of events, Christmas time, everything like that. Um, we enjoy hosting. And so I will say that having a gender reveal party has by far been one of my favorite things ever. But I'll get back to that real quick. I just wanted to say that I'm using the Method All-Purpose Cleaner. I typically use like the Jaws Granite Cleaner or I even have the seventh generation granite cleaner that I use, but I broke the handle on the cleaner. So I'm just using the um, multi-purpose spray, which I do absolutely love the Method products. But what I was saying is that gender reveal parties are one of my favorite, whether they're ones for myself or ones for, for somebody else. For some reason, just finding out is super exciting, even though the gender really doesn't matter. It's just kind of a fun way to find out. And it's also like super nerve wracking for some reason. I always thought that I would be a girl mom for life. So this totally changes the ball game. But if you're not familiar with what a gender reveal party is, you basically gather like friends and family together and then you find out the gender together. Now, sometimes some people will know the gender before they actually do the reveal, but I have never known the gender. We always have somebody else find out and then they hand us the color of the gender and then basically we all find out together at the same time. So at the time of this gender reveal, we had no idea and we were so shocked and it was so fun to find out with everyone all together. I do have a clip at the very, very end of this video and it's just a cute clip that kind of puts together everyone else's reaction and the rest of the party. If you did do a gender reveal for any of your kids, then leave me a comment down below and let me know how you found out. Every day I'm looking for a way to return to the town when everything was easy to learn. Don't know when it started to get so serious. Building up an illusion of a world full of trust. 
So this is my first of several loads of laundry. I think I have several towels to wash, the girls clothes, my husband's clothes, some of my clothes, and I think more of the girls clothes. So the laundry is never ending. And especially like this last week, we plan to rip out all of the tile in the laundry room. I think I mentioned this in a video before that we were actually gonna start redoing our entire closet. And I went to Ikea to order the packs um, or closet organization system, but a lot of those parts were out of stock. So I actually went to the store and talked to a specialist there and they just recommended order, ordering it piece by piece. So ordering what they have in stock and then seeing like when the other things will come in stock and just ordering them like that. So I am going to start doing that. I'm a little bit nervous, but that's where we're at with the closet system. But because we had to put that closet project on hold, that is why we are working on our laundry room first. But I have to get all of the laundry done first, like tons of laundry, because if we're gonna be ripping out the tile and taking out the washer and dryer for a few days, then I need to make sure that it's all done. Now there's nothing necessarily wrong with our laundry room. I'm just gonna make it look nicer, prettier, and also get better laundry baskets and make it a little bit more functional. So anyone who has redone their laundry room, then give me all the tips and tricks and any must haves. Let me know in the comments down below. So I have another question for y'all. Have y'all started any spring decorating yet? And if not, when do you typically start? So I plan to start doing some spring decorating this week and then have a video up for you guys next week that is all spring cleaning and decorating. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you're subscribed because it will be another good video. Don't talk about it like you're crazy. You know damn well I can't replace you Just say what, say what you mean Don't waste your time being mad at me Say what, say what you mean, say what you mean so if you didn't know this about me, I never started off on YouTube thinking that I was going to be creating cleaning and organizing videos. So it kind of evolved into that. And one of my first ever like cleaning or organizing projects, I was never like a great organizer and never great at keeping things organized and keeping things decluttered or anything like that. So actually during the pandemic is when I got really inspired to change things up a, a bit and make things a little bit more functional. Now I'm not an OCD person either. So I'm not, um, or at least about cleaning and organizing. So one of my very first projects was to actually try out the KonMari folding method. And I say this in every video now that I absolutely love it. But when I first started to try it out in my mind, I just thought it wouldn't be maintainable like I would do it this first time and get everything organized and then I would just go back to my old ways um, but luckily because it was so easy to see everything in the drawers I went out and I got some of those drawer organizers and put them I started off in sailor's room first then I moved on to Savannah's room then I moved on to our drawers and I don't think that I'll ever go back to a different way of folding now is it as perfect as it was the first time no but it does make it a lot more functional so even if you're not like a super organized person like i was wasn't well i'm still not super organized but um i try to be at least um just know that if you do like try something out and it doesn't work you can always go back to your old ways but sometimes you'll find that it does work and it, it is functional and you'll spend the extra time like doing the extra folds and things like that especially if it's more effective and if it works for you what i do what i do is try to give me more than words what i say when i say i quit it's only because it hurts we got play we got places we can go to figure out what we've done what we need what to do I got you, I got you, I got you.
got you What I do, what I do is try to give you more than words What I say, when I say I quit, it's only cause it hurts We got play, we got places we can go to figure out one of my goals is that if I can get all these pieces for the closet system worked out and finished, hopefully sometime soon, I doubt it'll be soon, then I plan on getting rid of my dresser entirely and moving all of the clothes into drawers within our closet. Now I've never showed our closet because it's so horrible, but I need to start decluttering it. So hopefully this project will get me a little bit motivated because I have been slacking on the motivation side. <laughs> Sitting on the front porch, sipping on the rocks Citrus in our beverages Citrus in our beverages Show only the good sides Always pretty smiles are covering our faces You know it is all lies You know it is all lies On and on and on it goes Round and round the rodeo Breathing out air for a minute Taking my time to begin with On and on and on it goes Swing it down in life, you know Breathing all that for a minute Now I have Sailor helping me and we're gonna work on picking up the living room. So I told you guys that I was completely shocked to find out we were having a boy, but one thing that I'm a little bit nervous about is that we took the sneak peek at home test. So if you're not familiar with what that is, basically they have it available now where you can order this test online. And what you do is you take like a blood sample at home and then you mail it in and then they email you the results. So for Sailor, we did the test that they do at the doctor and they told me it was covered by insurance and I ended up getting the blood test done and they like sent me a $13,000 bill later. I had to negotiate with the insurance company for like two months before they would honor like it was supposed to be $99 and they they finally honored the price so then when I got pregnant with Savannah I was like I'm absolutely not chancing it I'm not doing the blood test at the doctor I'll find out at an ultrasound appointment so with Savannah we did wait and then the ultrasound tech like picked out the right cannons to pop and then we found out we were having a girl and I could have sworn she was a boy um, none of my pregnancies were super different neither was this one they're all like I guess miserable in the beginning I guess you can say so um, I was just so shocked that she was a girl because I thought for sure she was a boy so whenever we did this one um, I did go to like an ultrasound at 13 weeks and I tried to peek a little bit and in my mind I was like it is a hundred percent a girl and then so whenever the results came back that it, it said boy on the blood test then I was totally shocked so before I get back to that story, just take a look at how dirty these couches are. Our dog jumps on the couch sometimes, gets dog hair all over them, and there's probably food and other stuff on there. So I hate doing the cushions. It takes forever to get them all off and then to get everything washed and to put them back on. But I decided it was time to finally do all of the cushion covers. So that's what I'm doing here. But what I was saying about the sneak peek gender test is that it says that it is 99% accurate, but there is that 1% that it's not. And I had a friend tell me that she knows a friend or somebody where they said that it was not accurate. They said they were having a boy and then it ended up being a girl. So that is my only concern is like, what if I'm in that 1% category where it's not accurate? But I know I have a lot of moms on here and if you were pregnant like somewhat recently and actually did that at home sneak peek gender test and know what I'm talking about, let me know if your results were right. You held me back when I tried to move on from your life So you stole my life with clarity So hold me back, now you're here Cause I'm mad, show no fear Wanna let you know just how it felt Oh no, 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 no. Don't you 
One tip that I have learned when washing couch cushion is to make sure that they are all the way zipped up. I used to not zip them up and just throw them in the washing machine, but what happens is all of the strings will come out and get tangled. So make sure that you zip them up before you wash them. That way you don't have any trouble with like all of the strings on the inside. I can never bring me down. So I was watching one of Megan's video, Megan from Loving Life as Megan, and she talked about a Skillshare class that she had recently taken, which was about having an abundant mindset. And it got me thinking about the book I'm reading, which is The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey and Habit Number Four, which is Always Think with a Win-Win Mindset. The win-win mentality is the thought that everyone can win or the belief that it is beneficial for both parties or that there is enough for both people. Thinking with a win-win mentality is being happy for others when good things happen to them. I know sometimes it always drives a little bit of jealousy when you see somebody outperforming or doing better or having a cleaner house or being more organized than you or whatever it may be. But in reality, just because someone else maybe has a cleaner house or is performing a little bit better or is more organized doesn't take away from you. It's not a win-lose situation. It's not that because they're more organized, it doesn't mean you can't be either. Now, even though I'm comparing it to like organizing, he talks a lot about this in relationships as well. Now he says there are situations when win-lose paradigms are necessary, but it shouldn't be in your everyday life. Thinking with the win-win mentality makes things more cooperative instead of competitive because both parties are mutually benefited. Sometimes I think about this in relationships like having to win an argument, meaning that someone else has to lose instead of like seeing their perspective of it. And I feel like if we can come to an agreement where both parties are mutually benefited, then that's such a better mentality than always having to be right or always having to be in a win-lose or lose when type situation. So sometimes it's just natural to feel defensive, jealous, or competitive, especially when we have that scarcity mindset. But knowing that there is enough for us um, really creates that win-win situation and helps you thrive in relationships as well as in your personal life. But hopefully that was helpful and it can kind of get you thinking with a different perspective. I'm using the Dyson V7 as well as the handheld attachments that came with it in order to vacuum up the couch. Earlier in our bedroom, I was using the Tinco cordless vacuum. Both I like, both are effective, and I like the fact that they are both cordless. But I'm gonna move the coffee table over, vacuum up this rug a little bit before I pull out, or you can see in the corner, I've already pulled out the Bissell Pet Pro Shampooer, and I'm going to go ahead and shampoo this rug. It's all about us, it's all about us. as we're dancing close together, making I do have a few dirt spots here and there that I also plan to tackle while shampooing up this rug.
So the way that this works, if you're not familiar with it, is that whenever you are vacuuming away from you, there's a button at the handle that you press and that's what releases the water. And then you unpress that button whenever you are vacuuming towards you to suck up all the water that you just vacuumed out. So this is a super, super thin rug and Luckily, we I kind of go back and double check. I do have a rug pad underneath it and it does not soak all the way through to the wood floor. So I don't release a whole lot of water because you can control the amount of water that is you know coming out of the vacuum then you can kind of gauge like how much water you're using and everything like that so i don't get it soaking wet um reason being is because i don't want it to soak through underneath onto the rug pad but i do get it wet enough to where it does clean the rug really good Now I have to just let this dry and then I move on to our master bedroom rug. Now this rug is, I really, really liked it when I bought it. I made the investment, but I have never shampooed it before because the fibers on it are pretty thin. So I decided that I'm going to try and shampoo it because up close you can tell that it is pretty dirty, but I'm very, very nervous that it's going to start pulling apart some of those threads. On the rug so I'm going very very slow and gentle as much as I can I'm not releasing a whole lot of water on here just so that I can double check but as you can see there I can see that some of those fibers are coming off now it doesn't totally ruin the rug um, if it was really really doing something bad then I probably would have stopped and I wouldn't have continued to shampoo it but it's doing a good job picking up a lot of the dirt um, but it is like I said it is pulling Pulling up a lot of those threads. Oh, I'm into deep into this flow. A zero sum game that I will lose. There's no sipping past it. Every time you walk away from me, I want you. How could I want you more? Or oh, when did I lose my perspective? Oh God, have I lost it? But my cravings for you so shameless. Can't get enough. I've lost you. So that's everything that it picked up and again that's the rug fiber so it actually did pick up a lot more than i expected but it did clean the rug really really good so whenever i go in to and take the piece off in order to clean the shampooer as you can see all of that i assuming that is all rug fibers as well and including all of the dirt and dust as well. Now, this canister is super, super dirty. Whenever, it's probably more dirty than my hardwood floors or any of the other dirt. Like it, the water turns completely black, which whenever it does that, I always like it because it makes me feel like I did something or that it was worth doing. Let me feel your love again. Cause I've been running round in circles screaming out your name Take me to a different place Just the two of us and we can stay up all night Kissing under street lights Doing what we want to Doing what we need to do Staying up all night Everything is alright Now 
now all the cushions are finally dried up that evening so this is a workout in itself trying to get all of these cushion covers back on and zipped up nice and tight and as you can see the girls are having just a blast hiding in all of the cushions so the girls are also super super excited to have a new baby i wasn't quite sure because savannah is really attached to me and she does get jealous when i hold other babies or other friends kids she like just wants me to hold her only so i was a little bit nervous of what she would think i don't know if she fully understands sailor kind of does um, but we'll just see whenever the baby gets here how she'll be now what i do plan on doing is putting the girls in the same room so i'm actually going to have um, order like this bunk bed set i was so nervous about getting bunk beds because sailor's only four and um, i didn't want them like going up and falling off or anything like that but we looked at some bunk beds with them and um, I think I'm getting like a full bed on the bottom. So that way, if they want to share that bed for a while before like actually going up to the bunk bed, then that will work. But I don't know. You guys let me know. If your kids share a room and they're young, do, does it work? Do they love it? Do they have bunk beds? Do they fall off the bunk beds? I'm just like, I just don't know what to do. So any advice you guys have, leave me a comment below or send me a message on my Instagram and let me know. But so far that is the plan to have them share a room upstairs and then possibly put the baby downstairs. So in my office, I don't share it a lot because it is a total mess. Um, I may move my office upstairs and then put the baby downstairs. Uh, I haven't fully figured it all out yet, but whatever happens, I will be sure to share it all. I'll do tons of decluttering and you know have everything here for you guys to see and give you guys some motivation as well. Next, we are moving on outside and deep cleaning this patio area. So when I had originally planned the date of the party, it was supposed to be like a beautiful sunny day, high of 70 degrees. And our plan was to have a crawfish boil. Now crawfish boils are popular like in the South. Um, and I did this last year. And a lot of you guys from Louisiana, Mississippi, Texas area were all like, yep, I know all about crawfish boils. And then everyone else was like, I have no idea what it is. So. Um, basically you boil the crawfish with a bunch of seasoning and you add like corn and potatoes and any other type of thing that you want and you pull the tails off and then you eat the meat and the tail like they're like mini lobsters and it looks disgusting but I promise it's really really good so um, crawfish season just kind of started it's early on so we planned on doing that having everything outside and and that way we were supposed to clean off this whole patio area which we hadn't touched in since last summer i believe so we have this commercial grade surface pressure washer which is what chris my husband is using there he owns a landscaping company on the side so he has like all this commercial grade equipment but it's basically like a super super powerful pressure washer that is great on rugs and patio area so that's what he's actually using there to get all of the dirt and everything picked up it's kind of late in the evening so it got dark super fast otherwise it'd be so much more clear to see so we did all of this work outside to get everything all cleaned up and pressure washed and the day like within a couple days before that they were like oh nope a huge cold front's coming in it's going to be rainy cloudy cold and super windy now i feel like every time we have some type of event at our house then the weather like completely changes so we had to move everything in the garage and kind of boil the crawfish in the front yard where it wasn't super windy and then eat the crawfish in the garage and outside it just looks super super gloomy so we were bummed about that but we still made it all work and the patio is all cleaned maybe for another event
So as we get this area cleaned up, if you want to stick around for the next few minutes or so, I show a couple clips from the party. But thank you guys so much for your support. It really does mean so much to me. And to be able to comfortably share this journey with you all, I feel like you guys are all of my friends and I'm just so, so appreciative for every single one of you. If you're not subscribed already, I would absolutely love for you to subscribe. It really does help my channel, but more than ever, it's just an awesome community here. I'd love for you to be a part of all of the cleaning, organizing, and all of the craziness that goes on. But here's just a few clips of the party. But you had to go and drive me so crazy Now I'm feeling lost without you and I just can't be Without you, baby, won't you all night long, won't you all night long Tell me, why'd you have to go and drive me so crazy Now I'm feeling lost without you and I just can't be like it's so cliche to say watch this if you need some cleaning motivation but y'all I am on a three-day binge cleaning session and I am determined to get the house picked up so you can either come along for the entertainment or the motivation but either way I promise you we have lots to do on day one we're gonna start off in the main bathroom where I am going to give our shower a really really good scrub because as you can see it looks terrible and we're also going to be deep cleaning and picking everything up in our master bedroom as well on day two I am going to try and tackle the kitchen as well as the living room I'm gonna try and deep clean a couple areas in the kitchen and then pick up everything here and then on day three we're going to move upstairs i'm going to try and declutter and go through um, sailor's bedroom which is that's what you're seeing now as well as the playroom which is pretty much a complete disaster right now if you've been here before, welcome back. But if this is your first time here, then welcome. My name is Michelle. I'm a mom of two toddler girls and I am currently pregnant with our first baby boy, which I'm due in August. I do admit that keeping up has been a bit of a struggle, especially since I have been trying to work on a couple big projects such as our laundry room that we just completed all of the decluttering and organizing for that, and I'm starting in my closet already. So whenever I start bigger projects, then sometimes the rest of the house just falls apart. 
but I do admit, even if I stay on top of the cleaning, I still feel like I'm in this hamster wheel, just going round and round, and it's never going to be completely done and perfect. Maybe you guys feel the same way. But that's okay, we're all in this together. No need to compare ourselves to other people's houses. All we need to do is focus on our own. But let's go ahead and get started with day one and focus in the bathroom. Don't you wanna have fun? Said that they don't got a future, future like that. It burns, so give him something worse to kill his head with. Make him forget somehow. Why be that another day? She would have wished he stayed, but they're done. Sorry, this won't be enough this time. Yeah, he's calling all his friends to get some action and distract him right now. He's fine, but Lucy on the line. Let's get this started. Where's the party tonight? So what I'm scrubbing up in the bathtub is actually like this play paint. So the girls will take a bath in our bathtub and then sometimes they pull out this little paint set and it's specifically made for, for the shower or the bathtub or whatever and they'll color on all of the walls and the shower bathtub and for some reason this one was a little bit harder to get off so i was initially using the jaws bathroom cleaner but for like when i want to soak the tub or the shower i'll use the branch basics both are more natural products no harsh chemicals or anything like that and the branch basics is actually my absolute favorite for the shower in the bathtub before when i would clean it with like harsher chemicals like bleach or something um it would just be so strong the smell and the scent would be so strong um you can see the rust stains i was trying to show you guys that um, the bobby pins sometimes if we keep the bobby pins in there then and they sit there and get wet then they'll rust on the ground um, and same with that corner that was actually a little the little caddy tray that we used um, now I'm switching back over to jaws and the reason why I keep going back and forth is because I ran out of the branch basics so um, basically with the branch basics what you do is you spray it and then you have um, the oxygen boost little powder and you let it sit so I kind of sprinkled that there I have to let it sit for 20 minutes so while I'm doing that I'm moving over to the toilet area now I have done this before it's a black light and what you basically do is turn off the light and it'll show you all of the mess that you cannot see with a natural light. So I am I did this a couple weeks ago and I'm doing this again and basically it does detect like any type of urine stains. I know that is so sounds so gross and everything. I actually used it before to find urine stains in our carpet from our dog um, and then I was like, oh, uh, should I really do this in the bathroom or should I not want to see what happens? So anyway i am just showing you guys all the stuff you cannot see with a blunt with like your regular eye you have to use this light in order to see it and i know it's disgusting but that's just the reality of it it helps you actually get everything super super clean and that way you have like no hidden mess so i pulled that out just to show you guys here and then i will finish cleaning up this area and move on Front porch sipping on the rocks, citrus in our beverages, citrus in our beverages. Show only the good sides, always pretty smiles are covering our faces. You know it is all lies, you know it is all lies. On and on and on it goes, round and round the rodeo. Breathing out air for a minute, taking my time to begin with. On and on and on it goes, swinging down. 
now that I've let the branch basics sit for 20 minutes or so, I'm using this electric scrubber to scrub the bathtub. I've had this for, I wanna say almost a year. I think I got it last summer and I just ordered it off of Amazon. There was just like an ad that popped up and I was like, this is absolutely perfect. That way I don't have to like get on my hands and knees. I wish that the handle was a little bit longer, but anyway, it works fine. Basically what you do is you have like this USB charger and you'd plug it in and charge it so it's not battery operated and it comes with different, several different um, heads that you can change out and so right now I'm using more of the rounded one because I'm in the shower or no I'm in the bathtub right now um, and then it's, that one is like kind of for corners so I changed out the head there and now I'm going and doing some of the corners when I get to some of the bigger areas then I'll use a bigger head on the brush Once I'm done with most of the corners, then I swapped out the attachment to more of the bigger flat head attachment. That way I can get um, more of the shower part. One of the things that I asked you guys over on my Instagram about a week or so was to ask me any types of questions. And one of the questions I got was, what area do you plan on DIYing or redoing? And our my answer is that really i'm starting off in the closet and right now we have old carpet in our closet and our closet actually connects to the bathroom so one thing that we wanted to do was change out all of the carpet and get new tile but whenever we want new tile on the floor we kind of want to change out our entire bathroom and have it all flow together so one of our plans hopefully in the next couple of months is to declutter our entire closet rip out all the carpet in there as well as rip out all of the tile in the bathroom and in the shower i want to completely redo the shower because i think that i just haven't kept up with cleaning it the grout is just discolored um, it's actually a really it's a pretty big shower so it is a lot to clean and keep up with but i wanted to switch out the tile whenever we built this house um, the floor part is actually just tiles cut into smaller pieces so some of the edges get a little bit sharp so also we just want a different design we want to freshen it up it's definitely not terrible or anything that's unlivable it's just that um, I want a new more modern design I'm thinking of doing like a black floor or um, with black grout and then doing like white walls um, I don't know I also saw this really really pretty blue tile um, one of my biggest things is making decisions. So leave me a comment down below. What color tile do you think would look really good in the shower? I'm finally done in this area bathrooms are my least favorite thing to clean but that's all the tile that we planned to rip out that I was talking about earlier we're gonna have Chris actually do the tearing up of everything and then we probably will just hire someone to completely redo the floors in the shower and lay the tile only because it just it's a huge project it takes a long time and I don't want to be I don't want the bathroom to be out of commission for several weeks the next area I'm moving on to is our master bedroom. So during while I was filming this, we were also kind of redoing a lot of the stuff in the laundry room. So whenever we ripped out all of the tile in the laundry room, which is like right outside of our door, the dust got everywhere. It got all in our bedroom. It got all outside of the bedroom and I cleaned up most of that. but. 
Today is the day that I'm going to be trying to do more deep cleaning in the bedroom and mostly getting rid of a lot of the dust and everything that kind of came out from the laundry room. So small, watch the clock ticking off the wall. But tonight I'm letting it go. Spend my coin for sure. I'm gonna be myself, or I could be someone else. No one's stopping me now. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. I just wanna feel alive. It's just what I do when I'm out, so Try not to hold me down Feel alive when I'm in this town Look at those beautiful stars I wanna drive a faster car Nothing can break me, no, no, nothing can break me Try not to hold me down Feel alive when I'm in this town Look at those beautiful stars I wanna take a trip to Mars Nothing can mix of all of the cleaning I had a few loads of laundry to do I know I say this in like all my videos but if you are new here I use the KonMari method to fold all of the clothes so that's what I'm doing there and that's how I'm doing the folding style for the girls clothes I just put it in that little basket usually one side is one of my girls sailors and then the other side I put Savannah's clothes and then all the dresses I put on top and then take upstairs and then hang them up for all of our towels and stuff I saw this method on TikTok before and basically just a way to roll your towels it looks a lot nicer and fits a little bit nicer in ever in our linen cabinet or linen closet so I've just kind of stuck with that method for a while faster car i'm gonna be myself i'm gonna be someone else i'm gonna be myself i'm gonna be someone else i'm gonna skip my breaks i'm gonna make mistakes i'm gonna skip my breaks i'm gonna make mistakes i'm gonna be myself i'm gonna be someone else i'm gonna be myself i'm gonna be someone else I'm gonna skip my now that i have everything cleaned off you can see just how dusty our the top of our dresser is the mirror part the mirror right there all that whole area literally from it's literally from um, ripping up the tile in our laundry room all that dust just kind of moved over into this area like I said the laundry room is literally right outside of our bedroom and this is like the first thing that it hits so it some of it's probably just dusty because it's dusty but I would say majority is from all of that dust from redoing the laundry room another idea i have for switching out this room is that i want to get rid of this dresser you'll see that there's like a big crack on the dresser we didn't do that that is from um, we actually bought it that way they gave us like 70 percent discount and we we knew a glass guy to come and fix it but whenever we bought it we brought it home and had him come look at it to replace that piece it was like a very expensive piece because the way that the beveled was it's all it's also like tented there's a special type of tint on that mirror so he had a hard time finding an exact piece so I was just like you know what it doesn't bother me I'm kind of used to it now so um, but yeah it's not something that we like broke or anything but I do want to replace that dresser and get one of those fireplaces you know how they have those furniture piece fireplaces 
Um, that is kind of my idea to put underneath the TV. Now, before I can get rid of my dresser, I need to redo our closet. And I keep talking about this, I know. Um, so update on that is that I wanted to, I designed this whole closet system from Ikea, but there are so many pieces on back order. Just furniture in general, the way the economy is, the pieces, everything is on back order. So instead of redoing the closet right now, what we're doing is just, like I said, redoing the floors first. And then once um, we can get the closet system built out, then I can get rid of the dresser, then I can get my new fireplace piece. So even though I have all of these ideas, it's just that one thing leads to another. So you have to complete one before you can actually complete the next piece. But I know just one step at a time and eventually we'll get there. Time pretty late. I spent the week thinking about our next day. It was easier than so much easier than. Oh, like that time I picked you up outside of school. You said, Screw my dad, I make my own rules. It was easier than so much easier than. Take me back to the Take me back to those easy summer days When we stopped at nothing, baby Yeah, we stopped at nothing, baby They couldn't take us They couldn't change us They couldn't catch us Now, once I got all of the dust picked up Then I'm just gonna finish up by vacuuming up the rest of this room By the end of day one, I am pretty exhausted I get the majority of my cleaning done on the weekends and I typically get asked a lot, how do you, you know, have two toddlers? How do you work full time? Because currently I'm working from home full time and then also do YouTube. And the biggest thing is that I prioritize areas and I typically start off in the morning. In the morning is where I have the most energy. So I typically spend that time doing my cleaning. It's, it's usually like a couple of hours I would say maybe two to three hours it seems like it's so much longer and I don't really say okay I'm gonna block off four hours this morning and completely clean because that just sounds too much I just say okay I'm going to take care of the bathroom today and I'm also going to take care of the bedroom today and then tomorrow I'm gonna to do one or two other areas and then usually it takes longer than you know, I have initially planned, but in my mind, it sounds better than, okay, I'm going to clean for five hours today, if you know what I mean. So on day two, I'm moving on to two other areas, which are the kitchen and the laundry room. Now this doesn't take as long as the other areas. So I'll block off a little bit of time in the morning again to complete these areas. That way my weekend isn't completely taken over by cleaning. I just focus on, you know, two more areas and then the rest of the day we have to enjoy doing whatever we want. During the week is where I take time to edit and also complete my regular working job. And my kids do go to daycare during the week. So I think a lot of people had assumed, or at least over on my Instagram, that I keep the girls home all day, I clean, and I have two jobs. No, I am not superwoman. I do not get it all done all the time. I'm not a superhero. I can't do it all. So the only, the best thing I can do to prioritize work and family is to segregate my day as such. So during the day, during the weekdays, I will work. I will edit on my lunch break or work out on my lunch break or do things. I take many breaks in between. Otherwise I find myself getting too burnt out. Then when I get the girls after, you know, my day at work, I completely check out of work. There's no work, there's no editing, there's no nothing done. Um, I film pretty much far in advance. That way, um, if something does come up, then I, I don't have to spend my time doing work type stuff when I need to be spending that time doing other things. Like giving my kids the attention they need or spending that on family time. I enjoy having my alone time to focus and prioritize my goals and I enjoy the family time that I also have. 
I know everyone's schedule is so different, whether you are staying at home with your kids or you are staying at home while working with your kids. All of these different types of schedules can be such a challenge, but making sure that you have some sort of balance that works for you and for your family is what I have found is key. I don't like that there's a label or a right or wrong way to live life. I feel like you should just live life to your fullest whichever schedule, routine, or situation that you're in. Now the sink is a big pain point for me because there always gets like food and crud and all this stuff in the corners of the sink and one of you guys just said why don't you just get a toothbrush and clean you know the corners or the sides those edges so that's exactly what I did thanks for the suggestion um, going through with a toothbrush getting the corners as best as I can and then cleaning out the rest of the sink with Dawn soap sometimes I use the pink stuff um, I'll probably use that over on the stove is where I use it more but Dawn soap is just easy and it gets the um, I feel like it gets the stainless steel really shiny I think I'm losing it What do I For the kitchen type cloths, my favorite ones are the e-cloths. So the cloth that I'm using to scrub the sink rack as well as the other two silver cloths you might see on the counter, they're all e-cloths and that's what I recommend for the kitchen. I also have just a regular e-cloths and basically the purpose of those is that you're not supposed to use product with them. You just wet them and then they're supposed to kill 99% of the germs. I did order something on Amazon that helps detect germs on your hands and on countertops. I'll have to pull that out and see where it is and then maybe in the next few videos I'll test it out and see if the e-cloths work well with the germ detection stuff that I bought. I just cleaned out the little turntable in the microwave and now I'm just cleaning out a little bit more in the microwave. One thing that I do sometimes is get, I have like this little, it's called an angry mama thing that you fill with vinegar and then you put it in the microwave for eight to 10 minutes or so and it all the steam from the vinegar is supposed to help loosen up all of the dirt and not dirt but like food and stuff in the microwave um, or you can just get a bowl fill it up with vinegar and it's supposed to help clean it out real clean our microwave wasn't terrible so that's why i just used some soap and water and then gently cleaned it out next i'll move on to the stainless steel stove it's been worse before so this isn't completely terrible but i am going to use the pink stuff the miracle paste on it so i'll just grab a cloth wet the cloth and then grab a little bit of that paste and then go all around the stainless steel on the stove i don't need you here to feel good no i'm not angry i got better things to do tell your friends
this might be a random question, but are you guys a fan of flavored water? I just saw a water sitting there on the counter, which made me think of it, but I typically drink a lot of carbonated water like the LaCroix brand and what's weird is like I only like the LaCroix brand of flavored water I don't like any other brand mostly of the ones that come in a can but another one that I drink really often is the Topo Chico's which are really nice and refreshing um, and then recently that I'm pregnant I've been drinking a lot of lemonade which I typically don't drink um a lot of other types of drinks other than water like I do not drink cokes whatsoever any type of soft drink or soda I do not drink I just don't like them they give me a headache um, so now I'm drinking a lot of lemonade and tons of different types of carbonated water if you guys have any good ideas to make like different types of mocktails or have a good recipe then um, leave me the recipe down in the comments below and if you're not familiar with a mocktail, it's basically just like a non-alcoholic drink. Before the clock runs out. Closer to the, to the beginning of the year, I told you guys that I would share a lot more healthy recipes, low carb meals. That's typically what I lean to. But to be honest with y'all, um, I have not been eating completely great. Um, even with my other two pregnancies, I did go off a little bit, but I was pretty well like keeping everything healthy, worked out a ton. And in this pregnancy, I feel like I have just fallen off the wagon. Um, I've probably gained almost 20 pounds already and I'm 19 weeks pregnant. So that's more weight that I've gained at this point in my pregnancy than with my other ones. And I've just been a lot less energy, I feel like, even though it seems like I'm doing a lot just overall. And then I was pretty sick the first part of my pregnancy and I know that sounds like if I'm sick I probably wouldn't eat but I feel like I would just eat to hopefully make myself feel better and it didn't always work out that way not that it really matters but in my other two pregnancies I did gain a total of 33 pounds with each and that was with um, exercising a lot eating pretty fairly healthy like not all the time but you know about average health wise and um, I enjoy losing the baby weight. I know that sounds really, really strange because that's most people's pain point, but to see as big of a transformation as I see when I'm losing that weight just really, really motivates me and gets me going. Now, just because I enjoy that transformation doesn't mean that it comes easy. And in fact, body image is the number one shame factor in women. And one thing I realized is that you are always going to be your own biggest critic. Yes, I know it's good to always be happy with who you are and fine with what you have, but it takes a lot of mental transformation in order to get to that point. This is why mindset is so important because you need to be able to have or put yourself in a realistic situation in order to appreciate every step of the journey. If it looks like some things just come naturally easy for others, it's probably because they've created a habit and formed a lifestyle around that. So for me, for weight loss, you know, typically after having a baby, I have about 30 pounds to lose. I don't focus on the numbers. I focus on the habit. How many days a week can I get out there and do a quick workout? What type of quick workout can I do that's manageable for my, the recovery that I'm in? So create the habit first before worrying too much about the scale and the numbers. Next, focus on the things that you can commit to, not what society thinks you should do. Now, I am a big fan of challenges, especially paid challenges, because when I have my money involved, then I take it so much more seriously. But I'm not a big fan of fad diets. Remember, you're trying to change your habits and your lifestyle, not trying to get a quick fix. Also, be sure to celebrate your mini wins. Most of the time when I hear celebrate your mini wins, it means go out and eat a cake or something like that. But as you start getting losing some of the weight, you can also reward yourself, buy yourself a new shirt, buy yourself a new pair of pants that fit. So mini wins can be any type of different types of celebrations. 
Now I know none of this is cleaning related, but I do get asked a lot, which is why I wanted to mention it. But you can also apply this to cleaning routines and cleaning habits as well. If you wanna focus on a specific area, then create a habit of cleaning. If you don't want dishes in the sink every night, make sure that it's picked up every single night after dinner. Now that may just sound simple to you because you have created the habit of already doing that. But now if you haven't noticed, I have finished day two and now I am on to day three where there's two special areas that I wanna pick up. I mainly wanted to focus here in the playroom because it's a disaster. It's been this way for a couple of weeks and what you kind of don't see is that all of the bins have toys that are not the correct toys. We had um, a get together a couple weeks ago and when I asked the kids to clean up, then all of the toys just got put into bins that are not organized so because i spent so much time organizing this room i want to say like a year ago when i ordered all the bins when i labeled everything um, i want to kind of keep it that way as much as possible so it does bother me if things are like in the wrong bins so that's why i'm going to go through and kind of also organize some of the stuff that is disorganized they're also doing a book drive at school so i'm going through some of these books and we're going to be donating a lot of them um, over to the school. The second area I'm going to be picking up is Sailor's bedroom. Um, I didn't realize that her bedroom was also kind of a mess. Not terrible, but I do plan to pick up in that area as well. <laughs> When I originally completely decluttered this playroom, like I said, it's been a year, maybe a year and a half, um, I put the playroom with things in different stations. What I mean by that is that in one section, I kind of have like the art area and that's where I was trying to organize over there where they have coloring books, stamps, colors, anything like that. Um, in one section, I have like the reading area where you can see like that pink couch, which is the nugget couch is next to the bookshelf where they can grab a book and they can sit down and read in that area. And one of the other back corners, I have a lot of, it kind of became the Barbie doll, um, dress up, accessory type area where I have these baskets from Ikea. And within those, they have um, other containers such as like um, hair accessories or anything like that. Um, also that little play kitchen they had since they were really little and I wanted to get rid of it at one point but they constantly still make pretend food in there so that kind of moved up here and then for Christmas they got that humongous dollhouse and like a ton of Barbies so I also have a container with all different types of Barbies Barbie accessories that Barbie playhouse and then like the Barbie camper which is that car right there 
Now I do get that it is a ton of stuff, a ton of Barbie stuff, but this is all stuff that they've gotten like within the last six months. So I really hate just like tossing it out or donating all of their new toys that are like not even six months old, like from Christmas time. So that's why all of that is there. Hopefully it is temporary. And once they stop playing with it, then I'll start swapping toys out. Um, in our cube area where you saw all the cubes, that is like more sensory toys, I guess you can say. So like building blocks, um, there's like um, any type of stackable items, blocks, puzzles, cars, anything like that kind of goes in that area. Now it's definitely not kept up, cleaned, and as organized as I would like to have it. I mean, I guess it is a kid's playroom, so the point of it is to make a mess, have playtime, have fun, explore, um, and then I want them to organize it the way I want it organized, but that's not always the way that they understand how to have it organized. So with this, you just have to be patient. I come up here once a week, maybe every other week. It's not like every time they come up here, I go and clean everything up and go back and reorganize things in the right bins. Um, I let it sit, you know, I don't see it that often. So when it gets really bad, then I'll go in and take the time and redo it. But as for like an everyday thing, no, I'm not up here do, cleaning it every day. That's why it gets bad sometimes. These moments, the light poets to me. had a couple baskets that had a ton of toys in them so I just dumped them out and now I'm kind of going through and sorting where all of the rest of the toys go. Next, I'm moving over to Sailor's room. Sailor is my four-year-old. Savannah is my two-year-old. And for now, the mo most of the stuff they have in here is just like stuffed animals. I don't keep a lot of toys in their bedrooms. I don't like their bedrooms being like cluttered or anything. I like to just keep the toys in the playroom. And there's a couple toys downstairs in the cabinet. But other than that, then um, this is her bedroom. And my plan is to actually order a pretty safe bunk bed to put in here and then have both of the girls share this room and in Savannah's bedroom we had done her bedroom so beautiful it's girly whenever we did the nursery with cute wallpaper a cute little chandelier and I just do not want to take all that down and make it a boys room so that's why I've mentioned before that in our downstairs office area we actually have painted blue for an office and we might put the baby downstairs in that room and then I'm going to make the Savannah's room, which is more girly, turn that into my office upstairs and then have both of the girls share this room here. I initially wanted to keep all of the kids upstairs and all of the kids stuff like with the playroom upstairs, but 
with a baby, it is kind of difficult to have all of their stuff upstairs. Um, I originally thought it would be great, but walking up and down the stairs every time you need to change their clothes, get a diaper, do anything like that, it's kind of a pain. So with both girls, they were down in our bedroom for the longest time and also all of their stuff and extra clothes and stuff just sat in our bedroom for like six months because I was too lazy to continually go up and down the stairs when they needed stuff. So that's the idea is to see how he does downstairs in the extra room we have downstairs and then put the girls upstairs in that room. But the last thing I'm doing before I end this three day binge cleaning is to vacuum up this area upstairs. You actually can't see it because of the color of the carpet, but there's actually like dried Play-Doh um, everywhere along this carpet. I have no idea how it got there. It's just is what it is. The stuff that you find sometimes. So I'm going to clean up, vacuum up everything up here. I'm using a really, really old shark vacuum um, to clean up this area. But thank y'all for sticking with me and keeping me company on this three day chaotic binge cleaning. Make sure you're subscribed for more big projects, updates, and most importantly, cleaning motivation. I'll see you guys next week.